Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I have many things to say. First, of course, is a big thank you to Michael for the most poetic introduction of my life. <laughs> I, from, I think I will now call myself Mowgli Prager. I, it, it, it goes well. Well, this is very special to me for many reasons. Uh, one is that I am back in Romania after 40 years. I was here in my 20s when it was a communist country, or more accurately, when it was a country ruled by communists. But I hate evil, and I hated communism like I hated Nazism. And so I specialized in communism at my university, and I came to Eastern Europe year after year, and I went to the Soviet Union. I would learned Russian. And uh, it was uh, quite something. I learned two words in Romanian, I'm sorry to say. But it's the truth. They were the only two words I learned. Treasca portidul. <laughs> because that's all I saw everywhere. Treasca portidul. And you didn't need to know Romanian to know what that meant because I knew from the Soviet Union what all the signs meant, hailing the Communist Party of the Soviet Union and the Soviet people, the builders of communism, and all of that. And whether it's, you know, Russian or Hungarian or Bulgarian or Polish, and it was all nonsense and it was all evil, and I knew it. And the sad, there were many sad aspects to all of that. One of the saddest is that when I would go back to America and start lecturing about life in communist countries, Americans totally understandably, but sadly, did not understand totalitarianism. Did, it, it was a word. It, it didn't mean anything. Do you know that when I gave my uh, thesis at Columbia, and I gave it orally, my professor, and I'll tell you who it was, is Zbigniew Brzezinski, who was the head that he was then teaching at Columbia University and then became the head of national security for President Jimmy Carter. And I remember using the word totalitarianism in my thesis. And he said, excuse me, Mr. Prager, but we don't use that word here. We're not sure what it means which is amazing since Brzezinski came from Poland. He didn't know what it meant. And it was, it was part of what I realized was going on at our universities, the moral confusion at our universities, which I will come to. There is a very interesting, if, I'm, if I may say that about something I wrote, a very interesting piece I wrote many years ago, how I found God at Columbia, and I will come to that in a moment. What I want to speak to you about tonight, because there were so many things I, I would so love to speak to you about, but happily, if you enjoy tonight, there's much more on the internet. Uh, there's, there's a lot of Prager stuff. By the way, how many of you have seen a PragerU video? Wow, <laughs> that's, that's really wonderful. That's, my, that's really my dream. Professor after professor was telling me there was no difference between men and women. That it was all socially constructed. There's no built-in difference. Today it's worse. Today not only are we taught, our kids taught at college and high school and elementary school that there is no difference between men and women. They are taught that there's no such thing as men and women. If you sign up for Facebook in America for gender, you have 56 choices. Is that clear? I mean, I want to make sure that was clear. Under gender, sex, it is now 50, you could be 56 things. No, you can't. You could be one of two things, male or female. 
I was learning that nonsense. I was learning that the United States and the Soviet Union were equally responsible for the Cold War, that Stalin and Truman were moral equals. And this is, this is what my, my field of study was, communist affairs, the School of International Affairs at Columbia. So I was being taught by very intelligent men and women nonsense. And it drove me crazy. How could such bright people believe such stupid things? Do you know I have been doing a radio show in America for 33 years. One of the most common things people call to disagree with me about is this. They will say, Dennis, I don't understand why you promote religion. More people have been killed in the name of God and religion than anything else. Well, I always realized they must have gone to college. There's no other explanation for such a stupid comment. More people were killed in the 20th century in the name of humanity, not God, than in any other century in history. There's no close second. Communism and Nazism were the most barbaric doctrines in history. They were secular. They were not religious. They were secular religions, but they were not religious. They hated religion. <laughs> I remember, because I studied Russian, I, it was, I remember oh, all the societies and museums that Stalin created and Lenin created when they came to power. Bezboznik means without God. It's the fancy word in, in, in Russian for, uh, for atheist. That's, that's what they, they, they hated religion, any religion. <laughs> On my radio show, when somebody says something particularly stupid, do you know what I say? Say, I never ever have, I've never once insulted a caller in 33 years. I am very polite to all callers. But I do say the following, if they say something very stupid, I say, I'm just curious, what college did you go to? <laughs> And then they will say, why do you ask? And I said, because you had to go to college to say something that stupid. <laughs> if you didn't go to college, you would never say that. And I'm not insulting you, I'm insulting college. And I, want, and I, I make that clear, I'm not insulting you. You had to learn that. I don't think this is what I am about to say is a problem in Romania, but it is a big problem in America. And I learned about it because of my radio show. After all, I talk to millions of people and many call in every single day. In America, there are many, many adults who do not speak to their parents. This is an, a, a national epidemic in the United States. They're angry at their parents, and they have cut off all communication. I have had parents call my show and start to cry on the radio because their son or daughter has not spoken to them in five years, ten years. I have had parents call me to tell me their child does not let them see their grandchildren because they're angry at them. Do you know, I have been to every European country except Slovakia and Macedonia. I've been to 130 countries. I've traveled a lot. Do you know what is amazing? Every European country all over is graffiti. All over. This was not true in a more religious Europe. And for, for Europeans, it doesn't even matter. It's street art. It's not street art, it's vandalism. Uh, by the way, the proof, it's, there's a very simple proof it's not street art. Ask anyone who says it's street art, can we do it on your house? <laughs> right? Who doesn't want art? Free! You will have free art. You don't even have to pay them. They're lying when they call it street art. They're lying because they don't want it on their house. In one of my books, I list art museum after art museum, which has an exhibit of poop, urine, 
vomit, menstrual blood. The, the art, art, the left in the arts loves that stuff. Now, by the way, I looked up poop in an English Romanian dictionary because I, I didn't know if you would know what poop is, but I can't say the bad word. So it said caca. <laughs> is that correct? Is that a bad word? It's somewhat bad. Is there a worse word? Okay, thank God, thank God, okay, fine. I don't want to be gross, but I, that's what I got when I looked it up on Google. So you have to, I'll give you example after, so the most recent is in Holland, at a very big museum in Holland. Now you have to understand, this received a serious review in the arts section of the New York Times. This is taken seriously. There, you enter, it is a, a gigantic, the biggest room of the museum, bigger than this room, and gigantic poop. Sculptures of poop. That's called art. Does the word scatological mean anything? That's what it is all today, scatological art. The Museum of Modern Art in Orange County, California, where I live in California, has a giant, giant, uh, I would say 10 meters high uh, dog, sculpted dog, and it is always peeing, urinating in, on the front wall of the museum, a yellow stream. That is in front of the Museum of Art in Orange County, California. The Guggenheim Museum, one of the most prestigious museums in the world, New York City, just had an exhibit for a year, a pure gold toilet bowl that worked. A working toilet, pure gold by an Italian artist. And you could go in and you pay money and you could poop, or P. And do you know what the name of the exhibit was? America. <laughs> so you could go to the Guggenheim and you can pee or poop on America. This is the, this is the world of the arts today. I can give you example after example. Piss Christ, have you ever heard of that one? Where the artists cru a urine and a crucifix is inside. It's called Piss Christ. It's gone from museum to museum in America. I'll tell you this, there would be no Piss Quran in America. <laughs> Among other things, the left are cowards. They pick on Christianity because nobody's going to hurt them. They're frauds. The whole world, it is, it is, a, it is a fraudulent world. This is the post religious post Judeo-Christian world that the left has produced in the arts. There is no such thing as the beautiful, the uplifting, Michelangelo or poop, you choose. Rational, was Marxism rational? One of the dumbest ideas in history. Karl Marx was a dummy. He was a brilliant, <laughs> He was a brilliant dummy. Why did you applaud? Do you know very few American audiences would applaud? You applaud because you lived through it. You lived the consequences of people believing idiocy. Still do. <laughs> yes. That is why the only Latino, Hispanic, conservative community in America are the Latin Americans who came from Cuba. I always say, those who know evil are conservative. Those who don't know evil are on the left. Because the left is naive. You understand, you live, the, the, the lie, the gigantic lies of, of Marxism, I mean, it was astonishing. You know, let everybody be equal. Let everybody be equal means let's have totalitarianism. That's what it means. There is no other way to have everyone equal. 
As I tell Americans, it's not fair, I agree, baseball players make much, much more money than teachers. It's not fair, but thank God they do. It means it's a free country. Only in a totalitarian state will a baseball player and a teacher make the same amount of money. But that's all they talk about, equal, equal, equal. Let everybody end up the same. They, did, they do polls in America now, more and more. The majority of, of, of the members of the Democratic Party in the United States think that it would be a good thing if there were no rich people in America. You had to go to college to believe something that stupid. <laughs> you know who pay almost all the taxes in America? Rich people. You know who build the hospitals? Rich people. You know who build the museums? Rich people. What are they talking? They don't know what they're talking about. They don't. They live in a world of theory. So that is, anyway, that is why I came here. And I, I had actually... As painful as it sounds, I had, a, I had a somewhat good time because as a young American, I was somewhat celebrated. People enjoyed meeting a young American. Not many Americans came to Eastern Europe when it was communist. And so I enjoyed the Romanian people, but, it's, but there's no comparison. You know, you can't know how good it feels for me to meet free Romanians. It is just... It's a dream. I, I, I have the chills as I, as I talk to you because at that time, it didn't seem as if communism would end in my lifetime and I was just 25 years old. But it did end after too many people suffered. In America, it is so difficult for a conservative to speak at a university that whenever any of us are invited, they, they send police to guard us. I went to the University of Wyoming last year to speak, among the universities I spoke at, and a left-wing uh, instructor uh, wrote, a, uh, wrote against my coming, that I am a bigot and a, and a, a racist and all of the usual things, and an anti-Semite. <laughs> so this was wonderful. You see, they don't know anything that we stand for. They know nothing about us. So they have a list, and they throw darts at the list. And, oh, will it hit racist? Oh, call him a racist. Will it hit sexist? Call him sexist. Anti-Semite? Call him anti-Semite. So the darts hit anti-Semite. So this Jew <laughs> is an anti-Semite. So when it came out that, that it was not really likely that a Jew who writes Torah commentary is an anti-Semite, she dropped it but she kept the other ones, which are equally absurd. This is what is happening. I don't know if there, it's happening at universities in Romania. I just don't know. If it isn't, then you really, really can be a model to the Western world because you will have among the only universities in the West that have not been taken over by moral sickness. This is the power of the left in the world. It is a broken moral compass. That's what is happening. Can you tell our Romanian young people, students, and not only young people, what we should emulate and what we should at all costs avoid? There's a blessing and a curse to your uh, 40 years of wandering in communism. The curse was the 40 years of communism. The blessing was in effect that the, the infection of, uh, ironically, you were, you were guarded from the infection of leftism because communism is sui generis. It has nothing to do with anything. I mean, it's obviously radical leftism, but you were, you were kept away from the trends of thought in the West. That, ironically, was a blessing. I, I, I say this only with sadness because I want to protect Western civilization with all my heart and all my soul. Western civilization is what, after all, is what abolished slavery. Nobody else abolished it before the West did. You teach Shakespeare, do you know that at the University of Pennsylvania, which is considered one of the, quote, Ivy League colleges, meaning one of the most prestigious colleges in the United States, the long-standing mural painting of Shakespeare at the Department of English has now been taken down. 
and now there is a lesbian black poet instead. I have nothing against lesbians or blacks. I have something against poets, but nothing against lesbians or blacks. Uh, but uh, but but it, it, it's it's obvious it excellence didn't matter. It's it's all race and gender and all of that stuff. So it, here is what am I leading to? You must rethink this utterly understandable idea, which and I I know enough of Romanian history to understand this yearning for the West and much wonderful happened in the West, but it's not happening today. It's happening here. You have something healthier. If you celebrate your Romanian identity, that is good. This non-Romanian wants you to celebrate the nation that you are part of. Not in a fascistic sense, obviously, not in, an, in a xenophobic sense that others are bad, but to affirm a national identity with goodness is a good thing. It fills one's life with a very powerful sense of bond with another. You should keep that. You should teach it. The, in the West, it is dying. The nation state is a non-issue. There is a man running for Attorney General of the state of Minnesota for the Democratic Party in the United States. I just saw this yesterday. He is, we he is campaigning wearing a t-shirt in Spanish that says, I do not believe in borders. If you do not believe in borders, that means you do not believe in nations. Nation is a good thing unless the nation does bad things, obviously, but it is a good thing. You have more to teach us right now. I'm not here to make you feel good. I almost never make audiences feel good. It's, it's just part of my, my, my modus operandi. But, so I'm not telling it to you to feel good. I'm not running for mayor of Cluj. I'm just telling you, you have more to teach us at this moment than we do to teach you. I wouldn't have said this 50 years ago or 100 years ago. But right now, that is the case. And not just Romania, in Eastern Europe generally. There is a, there is a, a healthy, not unhealthy, not fascistic, not xenophobic celebration of the nation state. In the West, they think they are above it. We don't believe in borders. You've all heard of Superman, correct? Have you all heard of Superman? The most famous comic in American history, right? The comic figure Superman. Superman, when I was a child, I saw Superman on television. I watched Superman and I read him in the comic books. The motto of Superman was, Superman, who stands for truth, justice, and the American way. That was beautiful. I loved it. Five, ten years ago, Superman, in the comic strip Superman, it is now edited by leftists. Superman stood in front of the United Nations and said, I am giving up my American citizenship. I am now a citizen of the world. That's a bad development. If I have a message, I did not know I would give you this message, okay? But I, it's become clear to me in just three days. You need to understand, you can't look to us anymore for these answers. You can look to things like PragerU, I, I, and I want you to, I, and we are working out a way to get them all out in Romanian. I mean, we know we change lives in five minutes. That's our business. That's the only reason we exist, is to get those ideas out. And if you can help, you will change people's minds. Not everyone, but anyone who has an open mind at all, there is a chance. But you must understand, do you know that just the professor mentioned the, the, uh, the, that the Trump separating uh, parents and children. First of all, the, that policy was done, you probably don't know this, it was done under Obama and it was done under George W. Bush. Number two, it was done, and, and does it go far as far back as Clinton? Fine. Uh, number two, the only reason that they, they are, they were, they were actually parents who came to America illegally 
and who were put in detention were put with their children. The most left-wing judges in America, the California-based judges, said children cannot stay with parents for more than 20 days in detention. That's when they got separated. In other words, the policy was keep them with their parents. But the left-wing court said kids can't be in detention with their parents. Number two, do you know that the Time magazine cover of the little girl crying next to big, gigantic Donald Trump? It was photoshopped. The Daily Mail in England showed the original photo. The girl was standing next to her mother. She was never separated from her mother. Time magazine's cover was 100% a lie. When Trump talks about the fake news, unfortunately he is right. Western news is a fraud. It bothers me terribly. We have a video out just, is it this week, Alan, with James O'Keefe? Just this week, he makes a brilliant point, this guy. He said, in the Soviet Union, most Soviet citizens who read Pravda knew they were being lied to. The problem in the West is that they read the New York Times and they don't know they're being lied to. Now, the New York Times is not the same as Pravda. I'm not even claiming that. But it's much more subtle. I know. I was covered last year in an article in the New York Times, and they lied about me. And then the lie was repeated in Wikipedia, and I can't change my own Wikipedia page yeah. because the left has taken over the Wikipedia page on Dennis Prager. Mm -hmm. I mean, we live this stuff. So please, you say it's a mess here. You don't, it's a mess in America. It's a mess in England. It's a mess in France. The human situation is a mess. Romania is not unique a mess. That's the good news for you, okay? <laughs> Welcome to a messy world. That's by what I want you to understand. But I feel obliged to ask something because there are very many people in Romania who are using this conservative discourse, denouncing the rottenness of very much in the West to argue for preferring the East and the East means Putin for Romania. So why should we still prefer the West despite all these, these lies? Western this? civilization is terrific. The West isn't. The West is rejecting Western civilization. They are tearing down pictures of great doctors at Harvard at its hospital because they're white males. That is a rejection of Western civilization which says Excellence is rewarded. So, as I said in Bucharest, and I'll say here, and, and now I've made the case, though. I really think I've made the case to you, because I know this is not how you're thinking. Maybe Romania will, and I don't say alone, but maybe or you have to think maybe Romania has a better answer than England, even better than America now. I think American, the original American value system is the best. I love it. Uh, limited government, uh, in God we trust, and, and, uh, and um, e pluribus unum, from many one. I think it's awesome. I wrote a book on it. It explains it. I think it's applicable. And it includes nationalism. I told you I want you to be strong Romanians. You can have that system. But America is abandoning that system. We're in trouble. Maybe you will be the leaders. There is no reason you shouldn't. There is none. Where is it going to come from? Do you know how confused they are in England? Do you know how confused they are in France? Do you know that the Swedish Prime Minister was asked, what are Swedish values? And she said, there's no such thing. The Swedish Prime Minister said it. There's no such thing. Sweden will not be Swedish in 20 years. And they don't care, because there's no such thing as Swedish. That's what they believe. There is no such thing as Swedish. God willing, there is something called Romanian, and that it is good, and we'll learn from you. Thank you for bringing me.